Now you might ask, where is KD gonna play this season? I don't know, but I do know one thing. KD's gonna get buckets with these shoes. What's up everyone? Welcome to the Wear Testers channel. My name is Alan and today I'm giving you a performance review on the KD15s. As you can tell by the name, this is Kevin Durant's 15th signature shoe from Nike. And yes, I can confidently tell you that this will be one of the top performance shoes of the year. These shoes have been so fun to play with and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll figure out if this will work for you or not. Any good performance basketball shoe needs a reliable traction and these shoes offer excellent traction. The traction pattern in these shoes features a topographical type of feel to them. And you kind of see similar setups in more recent shoes, kind of like the PG5 and the Nike Zoom Freak Three. But of course, the very first one that did it is the Kobe 9. It would be kind of blasphemous to say that this is equally as good as the Kobe 9. That's a very high standard. But what I can say is the traction on these is something that you really don't have to worry about. The grooves are nicely spaced out and it covers a lot of ground area. It gives you that multi-directional support that you need when you're changing different directions. I use them in four different courts three indoor, one outdoor, and in all four different conditions, I had no issues. It barely picked up little to no dust. This specific pair of shoes that I received from overseas features a solid XDR outsole. The XDR outsole is marketed to be a little more durable and also catered for outdoor use. But for me, whether I use it indoors or outdoors, I found the bite to be the same. It performed excellently in both conditions. I think you'll have no problems with the tractions for these shoes. Moving on to what I think is the best part about the shoe, that is of course the cushion. Just like last year's model, it carries over a similar cushion setup. It utilizes a full length zoom strobe unit and they combine that with the Cushlon midsole again. And with that combination, you get a nice and comfortable ride with these shoes. Having said that, I do feel like the cushion setup in these shoes has a little bit of a different feel compared to last year's model. The energy return with these shoes is a little different. I feel like it's a little springier. Instead of a pillowy and cushy feel that you got from the 14, means this cushion setup offers a firmer and a springier energy return. Personally, I felt like when I was going for rebound or if I was changing directions, once my foot landed on the ground, I felt like I could spring back up right away, whether that be making a move to start a fast break or to go back up for a putback a putback layup. I wish I could dunk. I did love playing with the 14s, but now that I have this to compare it to that, I slightly prefer this. The court feel is a little different for me. It feels like I could feel the floor beneath my shoes a little bit better. For such a comfortable shoe, you would think that you would need to be high off the ground and sacrifice some court feel, but this shoe does a really great job of striking a balance between having a low to the ground court feel, but also not sacrificing good impact protection with the cushion setup. The insole on these shoes are the same type of insoles that they featured from last year's model. They sort of feel cheap at first, but trust me, as you play more and more with it, it really does mold to your feet. The ride on these shoes and the comfort of these shoes just improves the more you play with it. Just like the 14s, this shoe also has a shank plate underneath, but a key difference is that the shank plate in this version is placed a little bit lower compared to last year's. So the shank plate being bottom loaded this time probably is a factor to why the cushion setup feels a little bit different. Again, the shank plate is there so that it prevents the shoe from overfolding and consequently, that protects you from overextending your arch. The KD15s are now essentially a low top shoe compared to the mid tops from last year. A lower ankle collar just provides a little more flexibility and mobility for that ankle. If your play style is a little more shifty and you like to change direction, I would like to think that you would prefer more of a low top compared to a mid top. That's not to say that a mid top won't work for guards and a low top won't work for bigger players. Last year's model had that feel where like it hugs your ankle a little more. Just because they eliminated that, it doesn't mean it's any less supportive. All the elements of this shoe work in conjunction to give you enough support. It definitely did that for me. Instead of the one piece Velcro strap that they had from last year, the shoe now features these two plastic wings that you can see on both sides of the shoe. 
The fact that it's two pieces of equal size versus just having one piece wrap around a shoe, that makes it feel a little more stable in terms of feeling. The plastic wings are both connected to the midsole and the bottom part of the upper. They are there so that your foot stays on the footbed and there's little to minimal shifting of the foot when you're going from side to side. If you get the correct size for your feet, the shoe's heel counter right here should definitely work well for you. Let that Kushlan midsole break in just a little bit and your foot should stay locked in and there should be no heel slippage for you. Let's talk about heel slippage. I will offer you the solution right away. I think you just need to get the right size. I have regular feet, but when I play competitively, I usually wear ankle braces. I use these Zams ankle braces. Because I wear ankle braces, I personally prefer going up half a size more recently. When I was first testing these shoes, I tried them without my ankle braces. And since they were half a size up my true size, I did notice a little bit of heel slippage when I was playing. It felt a little roomy on this side but when I tried on these shoes the way I usually wear all my other shoes I put on my ankle braces it just fit perfectly if you wear ankle braces or if you have wide feet you may need to go up half a size but for everyone else you need to get true to size the materials on this shoe are not anything fancier than last year's model but it does feel a little more malleable and broken in especially in the forefoot area but as you move to the back of the shoe it becomes stiffer so even though the materials are thinner and softer this time around, it still provides good enough support for you. Ventilation in these aren't the most amazing thing about it, but they do a good enough job of keeping my feet cool. And if you compare it to the KD14s, it's definitely a lot more breathable than that. Before I give you my final thoughts on the KD15s, we thought that it'd be valuable for you if you could gain some perspective from another fellow wear tester. And so take it away, Jalik. What's up, y'all? Jalik here. Before I give my thoughts on the Nike KD15, let me please give a warm welcome to Allen. Welcome to the team and welcome to the channel, my man. Super excited to have you here. Also grateful that you allowed me to be a part of your first video here on the channel. There's three things in particular that stand out to me in the Nike KD15, one being the traction, also the cushion, and then the support. So the colorway I picked up does use a translucent rubber outsole. It's also non-XDR, so I would not recommend playing in these outdoors. But as far as indoor play, the traction has been amazing in my opinion. I did need to wipe once when it started picking up some dust in the initial shoot around. But from that one wipe and the point where I upped the ante and started running some real games in these, I haven't had to wipe since. The traction has been money. As far as the cushion goes, of course it is a very similar setup as the KD14. In my opinion, it feels very much like the KD14. However, it does sit a little bit lower and it does have a little bit more stability to it with it being a firmer cushion foam. I feel like they did a great job making this a little bit more minimal than the 14, but also not sacrificing support. In some cases, maybe even adding support. And I know some people have complained about the heel slip in these, but for me, it hasn't been an issue whatsoever. So what I would recommend if you are worried about that is one, make sure you got the right fit. Two, adjust the laces whenever you can, whether it's a stop of play, a timeout, whatever you may be doing, and make sure that you have it comfortably in a good place where the shoe can move more with your foot. If you do that, it'll lead to three, Give them some time to break in. Give it a little bit more time, do some more flexing. And I feel like over time that shank will loosen up a little bit, start to flex a little bit more and move with your foot better, which is gonna help combat any potential heel slippage down the line. But yeah, for my overall thoughts on the Nike KD15, absolutely amazing performer. This may actually be my favorite shoe of the year so far. All that being said, Allen, ball's back in your court. Leak, out. Thanks so much for the assist, Jalik. That just felt like I lobbed that ball up. Jalik just grabbed that ball and windmilled it a bit, and he dunked that ball hard just to take us all home. I guess in that case, Jalik's assist would be for me. Despite Jalik and I having different play styles and builds, we still both like the same shoe, and I think that's just a testament to how good of an all-around shoe this is. It's a good tweener shoe. A lot of players will find something that they like about this shoe. That is it for my performance review for the KD15s. If you've watched all the way to the end, I just want to say thank you for sticking around. Most importantly, thank you for supporting the Wear Testers channel. I am so excited to be part of the Wear Testers family. I look forward to creating more performance reviews for you in the future. Again, my name is Alan. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.